Hey Leo, it's Suzanne with Sunny Forest Tarot here to do your special Valentine's Day reading. Um, we're going to take a look at maybe something that you don't know about the person that you're watching the video for, okay? <clears throat> but the first three cards that we're taking a look at is who this person presents themselves to be. This is how people might know them. This is how you might know them. And then we'll get into what you may not know about them. If this resonates with you, this is probably your reading. If this doesn't resonate with you, this probably is not your reading. All right? All right, so we have the Five of Swords. We have the Queen of Pentacles. And we have Temperance. All right, so this person is somebody that likes to win, okay? And they might like to win at all costs. So this is person. This person can be um, can be a little bit combative. Have you ever met people like that? Like they're just in their conversation style. They have. It almost feels like you're you're having a fight, but you're not having a fight, but you're having a fight. <laughs> um, you know, it's like if you say black, this person says white. You know, it, it's like they like the. Um, this person likes banter. This person might might like witty banter. This person is, you know, <clears throat> that could be, you know, that could be how they get through life, okay? Um, they authentically enjoy some type of conflict because the reason they enjoy conflict is because they like to win. And, you know, the reason I say that is because we've got the Queen of Pentacles next to the Five of Swords. So they're definitely, I feel like they're definitely honest. They're definitely no BS. I feel like they are authentically who they are. But, you know, this is somebody that is the, the devil's advocate. You know, I mean, like, look. Temperance, you know, you see her, this angel here, pouring fire and water, you know, into this uh, cauldron here. What do fire and water make? Smoke. This person, you know, likes to, they might like to fog things up, you know, in a very unnecessary way, but it's their personality to be the devil's advocate. You know, if you're sitting around a table at a meeting at work, this is the person <laughs> who says possibly what everybody else is thinking or, you know, questions the authority and has zero problem doing it. This person might be very, very political. You know, they like to talk about, um, you know, what's going on in politics who they like or favor in politics. They're just, they're, they're kind of a pot, okay, they're kind of a pot stirrer. They like to stir the pot. They like, you know, they almost like intentional conflict. And when, when that translates into a relationship or into a connection, you know, you might feel like, gosh, you know, I, I just can't get anything right with this person. You know, they ask me where I want to go to dinner. I tell them, and then they say no. <laughs> they say they don't want to go there. You know, it's like, well, then just tell me where you want to go. Like, they make things unnecessarily difficult or challenging. You might find that somewhat charming. I don't know. Um, you might find it annoying. But I, I feel like when this person, when this per like if you remove this five of swords, 
You know, I feel like this is who this person is when they're on their own, when they're by themselves. When they're around other people, they bring in this Five of Swords. It's, you know, there's a there might be a huge desire to always be right. This person could be very stubborn. They absolutely like to win at all costs. All right, so what... What is going on in this person's life that you may not know? What might surprise you about this person? What could be at the root of this behavior? <clears throat> <laughs> we have a snake. We have the mountain. Wow. And we have the anchor. All right. So what I feel like you may not know about this person, the reason that they can be kind of a jerk sometimes, okay? This is the snake, okay? The snake you know, is never a good card, okay? But there are reasons, there are different reasons that the snake comes up. Um, but they know, they know they're a little bit of a jerk. They know they're a little stubborn. They know that they have tendencies towards, you know, needing to win, you know, in not only in an argument, but in a conversation. Strange. Um, the mountain is about challenges, okay? This person views life as a challenge. They do. So it's like everything might, they might look at everything as a game. They might look at everything as work that they have to, you know, to be the best at or to win at. You know, the anchor, I feel like the problems that they create are, are rooted in the fact that they, they might not have, they might not have had a very good childhood. I feel like this person had an extremely strict upbringing that really, really affected them. You know, they might have been the youngest child or the oldest child in a large family, probably the oldest child. And they were constantly fighting for attention. They were constantly fighting, you know, to, you know, to be heard. You know, they might have been surrounded by brothers and sisters that, you know, were very talented. I feel like this person, the only way that anybody would notice them is by them picking a fight or, you know, disagreeing with everybody so everybody would pay attention to them. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's really about, you know, somebody that I feel like deeply wants loving attention, but they go about it in a way that is just, it is might be very tiring to you. You you could have a lot of feelings for this person and you could see glimpses of of this. You know, their authentic, balanced, peaceful self. But you pull in this five of swords quality here that you know might seem a little snaky to people. And it could be it could be very frustrating to be around this person. Gosh, you know, I have known people like this, you know, that you know, you have a conversation with them and it's the strangest thing. It's like the cadence feels like an argument. And I'm thinking, I, I just needed to know if you did that report. <laughs> 
think I didn't need to have this conversation. Oh my God. This actually reminds me of somebody. Oh my God. It was a boss that I had one time. I, I swear, I'll never forget this person. This person was, you know, and I'm not talking about your person right now. But this person was, bar none, one of the angriest people I have ever met. You know, and I would find myself laughing at this person just in awe of how ridiculous his his anger was. It's like, what are you so angry about? All right. So this is what this person would tell you, okay? Nine of Wands, Five of Pentacles, and Five of Wands. Look at that. That's exactly what we've been talking about. First of all, we've got, we've got two fives here. Okay, this person creates chaos. They know they do. Okay, they would tell you the reason that they create so much chaos and so much conflict. Okay, five, five, five. That's why I'm feeling this energy. No doubt. This person has... Nine of Wands is the card of battle wounds. This person has gone through life feeling, deeply feeling like nobody notices them unless they're this person of chaos. That's how they feel they get attention and love. So, they have a lot of battle wounds. They have a lot of scars. And I feel like it comes from childhood. And Five of Pentacles, Five of Wands, this person you know, feels like, you know, at their core that they lack a lot of talent. They lack a lot of quality. They might not have found their actual niche in life yet. You know, and it doesn't matter what age they are. You know, they feel like they, you know, they might have to work really hard because, you know, they're not doing something that they love. And what they have found that they're good at is creating a little bit of chaos, creating shock factor, you know, in a room full of people. Five of Wands is the card of competition. They're always competing. They're always competing for people's attention. So, you know, how that relates to you, you know, if this person's if this person shows these qualities to you, especially as a Leo, oh my God. Um, you know, they might be here in your life right now to reflect some of your qualities back to you. You know, it's like, this is like the description. You know, if you take a Leo and you look at a list of their positive qualities and a list of the qualities that aren't as positive, it's almost like this person is here to reflect maybe some of the qualities that you have that you may not be aware of. Because this here could be a list of the negative qualities of a Leo. Not to say that you exhibit those qualities, but if this person really agitates you, it's probably because you possess some of those qualities. And at the same time, if you're very attracted to this person, it's because they possess some of the qualities that you have, um, ironically enough. But we do have... We do have, you know, we do have a lot of, there's a lot of passion behind it. You know, I just feel like this person hasn't found their niche and they, they equate attention, whether it's positive or negative with, with love, because that's how this person grew up fighting for attention. And the only way that they got attention was creating chaos 
They feel that something is missing in their life. They know it. But it's because of the battle wounds that they have had in their life that, you know, that they come across in this kind of snaky way. I don't feel like they're a snake, though. I feel like they're wounded. And they fight to get attention. That's what this is about. They fight for attention. Let's pull a couple of Romance Angels cards. They are truthful, though. You know, I got to tell you, you know, I've sat with this person in many meetings. <laughs> um, and a lot of the things they say, first of all, would entertain the whatever out of me. And, you know, I would in many cases agree with them. This is the person that says what everybody else is thinking in a lot of cases. Wow, this could be the one. You're all, you've already met the romantic partner you seek. And then getting to know each other. Yeah, you know, this will make all the difference in the world. You know, you could be feeling a lot of connection with this person and you could be asking yourself, why? Why do I feel such a strong connection with this person who is regularly trying to argue with me. They might be doing some wit witty ba banter with you. You know, this could be flirting too. All of this could be their um, effort to flirt with you. <laughs> to get attention. This person is definitely entertaining. I can tell you that, you know, this would be somebody that would probably spark my interest. Okay. Getting to know each other as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. There are more layers to this person than you can imagine. You know, this person's like an onion. You know, you keep unwrapping the layers and more and more, um, you'll find things in that onion that you, you really, really connect with. I feel like this is like maybe... The outer layer but you know that this could be the one you've already met the romantic partner you seek I'll tell you one thing if nothing else this person has a really good weeding out system <laughs> in other words a lot of people will not take the time to unwrap this onion or unravel this onion the way that I feel like you would you know, and at the end of the day, that's what that person, that's what this person needs. This person needs somebody that wants to unravel the onion with them. Because there's a lot of layers to who this person is. They've been through a lot of challenges in their life. People might see them as a snake when in actuality, they're like a little wounded, a little wounded bunny that just had to fight for everything they got. And I still feel like this person, you know, really hasn't found their exact niche in life, but I feel like they will. And that could be why you're coming into this person's life is to, you know, not only validate the, the great qualities that they do have, but to listen to them so they don't have to fight in every aspect of their life. They don't have to fight for that attention. So if this person is that, you know, if they tease you a lot, if they flirt with you a lot, you know, if you feel like you're having an argument when you're actually having a conversation, that's this person. This is what they have gone through in their life. All right. All right, Leo. Interesting one. 
I want you to have a happy Valentine's Day. And also, I am opening up my schedule um, tomorrow on Saturday if you are looking for a same-day reading. All the information is below. Uh, you can you know, reach out to me. I'm here for you. Um, please read everything um, because I'm not going to have a lot of time to interact with you or tell you something that you're missing. Um, everything that you need is below. I will confirm that I get everybody's reading request, but I'm not going to be able to hold your hand through the process. You just have to do it. <laughs> okay. Um, usually I'll do that, but I won't have time tomorrow. So anyway, I hope you have a great Valentine's Day and definitely give this person a hug. Okay. This person needs a hug. All right. Oh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.